Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a very specific digital rebar uh, provision demo. In this case, it is a additional workflow step that we have added uh, as part of the utilities uh, that rack and builds for digital rebar. So if you are using digital rebar, uh, there's a series of content uh, items that are in the uh, not the dev library, although I'm going to use a little bit, but task library. Task library is a Rackin component that has a lot of interesting goodies. Um, there's a cluster activity. We just added an inventory activity uh, stage into task library that I want to demo because a lot of customers have been asking for exactly this behavior um, as an extension to the inventory that we already collect on a system. So if you're used to digital rebar, and you're in a you go to a machine and we're, we're visiting a machine here we collect uh, an amazing amount of data using something called go high uh, that we wrote it's it's built into the DRP CLI uh, and the runner so we automatically will collect a significant amount of information but this information can be overwhelming and it can be very hard to make actionable so we've had customers who wanted to who, who want to pull out much simpler data um, the type of data that we're showing here, and we're going to integrate what I'm about to show you, the stage, and uh, these additional fields hiding in the machine, so you can actually custom add your own fields. It's going to be sort of fun. Um, so from that perspective, what we want to be able to do is take Go High information and make it more accessible. And to do that, uh, what we've done is added a new stage into the system. So I'm going to go ahead and build a workflow that, that shows off this one stage. I'm going to call it inventory. Very simple. I'll make it green to make it a little bit easier to find. Okay, and so for this, uh, we can just start it. So it's going to have the inventory stage. And in this case, I'm going to use um, the reset, the workflow reset. So uh, workflow reset is in the dev library and it's really handy if I'm building and testing something because it, it clears the workflow so I can retest over and over and over again. Um, and so what, what's going to happen with this inventory workflow if I start it, so here's my machine, to get this running uh, I'm in, I have no workflow set at all. All I have to do now is to put us into the inventory workflow and go the runner is going to run, pick it up, and execute. So um, literally just ran through the, the process, the, that stage, which has one task, and then it, it cleared out the workflow. So if I wanted to continue to run it, I can just keep going back and forth. It's a really handy dev workflow um, in this. And so if I go back into the machine now, what you'll see in addition to the Go High inventory, I have an inventory data field. And that inventory data field has the same things that are in that those columns that are in the screen. So the CPUs, the family manufacturer, these are just items that are pulled out of the JSON Go High inventory as a, as a much simpler list. This is handy. It's not what people really want uh, as far as what they do with inventory. The two requests that we get have, are also in this stage and I'm going to show you how to activate them. One of them is to be able to test if the machines match your spec. So do they have the right number of NICs, the right amount of RAM, the right number of CPUs, are they the right vendor? Uh, all of those things are in the Go High information, but there's no way to test them. The inventory stage adds the ability to test whether or not the inventory matches what you expect based on profile values. So we'll, I'll show you how to set that. And then the other feature request we have is somebody wants to know if my inventory changes they want to be alerted about that. They want to be able to not continue forward. So if I'm provisioning a machine and it doesn't have as many CPUs as it had or as I expected, uh, then I want to stop and send an alert. And we also have what we call inventory integrity so that if the new next run of the inventory doesn't match your last run, we will flag that uh, and stop working. That means that you might not provision a system that somebody that somebody's tampered with so that you can investigate that and that might keep you from having a corrupted system or a compromised system be put into your fleet. So two very, very important features. And they're, they're simple to activate. So now that we've gotten a, a workflow that includes this inventory, we have a couple of, uh, so I, it, I've just enabled default behavior. So what I can do is I can add a new profile and we're going to call it inventory 
keep things really simple. And in that inventory, I'm going to add a couple of parameters. So one of the parameters that I want, so here's my inventory parameters. I want to add in um, an inventory integrity field. And if I add that in, I can, I can say yes. When I check inventory integrity yes, then it will stop run, the inventory step stage will fail if my inventory is changed. I'll show you how that works. But that's all you need to do to, to have an inventory check. And then the other inventory here, I can go in and I can say, you know what, I want to be able to set my inventory fields. So this is going to allow me to pick my own inventory fields. Uh, and that's going to map into that JSON field, into that JSON field using JQ. Uh, right now I'm going to leave it blank and I'm going to go back. I'll build it in a second. I'm just populating the fields for now. And then I have another inventory field in here called inventory check that's going to allow me to uh, set up a test of those items. Uh, so let's go through and build up all these things and show you how they work. Uh, and I'm going to make this purple, make it easy to find. Purple leaf. So here's my inventory field. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try and remember how these things are structured. I'm going to go ahead and find my inventory fields. Uh, let's see, they are right here. So my inventory fields, here's the default list that we're going to pull in. Uh, without any actions. This is what you saw generating that list. So I can come in here, copy that, go back to my profile, and edit here. These are the fields that I want to check. Um, so now if I didn't want to be testing, pulling the number of CPUs, I could remove that. Uh, what, I, what I actually want to do is we're going to go in, uh, let's go back, I'm going to open a new new browser, so we can, I can show you how this works. If you're not familiar with JQ, um, JQ is a, a, a parser for uh, JSON <laughs> that works in Bash. All this is written in Bash. Um, and so I can come into GoHi as an inventory and uh, decide I want DMI, BIOS, BIOS version to appear as a field. Let's just take the first three things out of the list. DMI, BIOS, and BIOS version. Capitalization matters. Um, so I'm just going to pull this here. And I'm going to create a brand new field in this list called BIOS. And I, I need it to be dot DMI dot BIOS dot BIOS version. And so it has to start with a dot. This is just JQ syntax, nothing fancy. And I need the right number of quotes, so let's see. And this is, there's a syntax check, so uh, it will tell me if I do this wrong. But what happened is I just added BIOS here into this list. And I'm going to remove inventory check for now. Oops, and that was painful because I, there's a bug in there. Shoot. Let's go back and do it again. Uh, in this case, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm only going to do BIOS so we can change it. So DMI, and this will also in, show you what the integrity check fails because it should fail the integrity check because our data is not going to be the same. BIOS, BIOS version. And let's see, that looks like good JSON. So let's hit save, go back and make sure I did it right. So the fields are BIOS, DMI BIOS. So I go back over to the system, pick this, choose my workflow inventory, rerun it. Everything's good. Go back into my machine. And let's see, my inventory data is not set. That means that something failed. If I had done it from here, I would have gotten the failure warning. Let's check our jobs. Nope. 
Here's my job that did the inventory inventory check. This is my screening for what's going on. Oh, inventory check is false, so it didn't get set. That's why I didn't check it. Um, oh, <laughs> and I also forgot to apply the profile. So none of the profiles are going to work if you're if you don't actually set them on the machine. So I have to go and put the inventory profile on the system in question. There we go. Let's go back to my profile and set the inventory check. The the uh, check inventory is is true. That makes sense. Once it's set on the machine, we should actually get the behaviors we're expecting. And we're going to go back and do our inventory workflow. This time you'll notice it failed. It's held on, on inventory check. Let's see what's going on. So in this case, we're running the system. It, it's giving us the same comments. It tells us that CPUs did not match the value. So we had an uh, integrity problem for the inventory. So I need to fix that. I'm going to fix it by undoing that flag and just saying, hey, you know what? We really don't care about the integrity check for the inventory. So uncheck the box. I could just remove it. But in this case, I'm going to uncheck it. Come back in. Uh, I'm just going to tell it to run. So it, it failed. Now it ran straight through. Uh, if I go back into the machine, what you'll notice is here's our inventory data. Our inventory data only has the BIOS VirtualBox piece. It passed the integrity check and it updated the inventory based on the list from my, um, from my, pro my profile. So in this case, I can have different machines with different inventory sets based on the profile of the data. Um, and so that's super powerful way to build and pick up whatever data you want for machines based on the profiles that, that are in there. That's how you get that set. But we can go a step further and have a similar action now where we want to be able to test to see that, those, that BIOS is actually the right thing. So in this case, I'm going to go back to my parameters. I'm going to go back to the inventory check field here. And you'll notice these are just simple regexes. So I'm going to pick that up. And so this is the fields that we had before. And it just does simple regex checks to make sure that they have valid values in them. So you do need to learn JQ and regex to make this system work. Uh, pretty low barriers to entry. So profiles, inventory, come back in here. I'm going to go ahead and edit. So I need to add in the inventory check field here. So I add that. So in this case, I, I have some extra fields. They're, they're fine. I can, just, I can just ignore them. And I'm going to add in BIOS, because that's my new field. And I'm going to make a, uh, let's see, if I wanted it to match exactly, I would say VirtualBox. Um, I'm going to say VirtualBox. So we have, we'll have a failure in the initial pass. That's excellent. So I can just hit save now. So now if I go back over into the system, I come in and I choose my work, my uh, inventory workflow. I run it. Now, once again, it fails. Inventory check comes in and it says, um, let's see. Inventory check is false. BIOS virtual box is what we're looking at. And it's saying we're starting a check of seven items, but BIOS did not pass. Virtual box does not match virtual box. So in this case, we have a machine where the expected values of the inventory didn't match. And so we stopped the workflow. Very, very important thing. So this allows you to say, I don't want you to continue if the systems don't match what they're supposed to be, which makes cats really angry because cats like to mess up servers, usually by leaving hairballs inside of them. So just be warned, um, unfortunately, hairballs are not one of the things included in our Go High inventory system. I think because Victor doesn't, doesn't care for cats as much as other people on the team, but I don't know that that's true. It's just hearsay. So if we wanted to go and fix that, what we would do in this case is we would say, uh, test for VirtualBox, or I could just regex it uh, to, to dot star. 
Uh, that would be fine. Um, it would just not pass. It would pass everything. Or I could eliminate the key, and it would also pass. Um, but in this case, what we want to be able to do is actually validate that it is exactly what we think uh, it should be. So I come back in. It's failed. All I have to do is mark it runnable. It'll go through the process. Once again, inventorying it. In this case, it just finishes the workflow because there's a match. Uh, and then we've managed to get our inventory models in here. If I want to go back to defaults, I just remove this. I remove those items from the uh, profile, and we're going to get back to the default behavior of having this inventory data in it. So, wow, that was a lot of capability in one simple stage. Uh, so that stage was able to uh, create a subset of the inventory in a flat way that you can then pull from the CM CLI or you can just simply retrieve. So in this case, uh, if you're trying to get data out of the JSON blobs that the UX that the, the API gives you, instead of having to dig way deep in Go High inventory, this is going to be much easier. You can just go into params, inventory data, BIOS, and grab your data. Uh, and you have a lot more control because you can name these however you want. So a very powerful way to sort of simplify the inventory system. Plus, you can validate very easily that the system is what you think it is and that nobody's tampered with it by changing it. Uh, all of those things are enabled in this one change and all programmable by adding uh, parameters into a profile or parameters onto a machine itself. Uh, both processes work. So uh, please check this out. We're super excited. This is something that people have asked for for a long time, and we, we sort of had a brainstorm of how to make it simple enough that I could explain it in a couple of minutes, uh, and you could use it probably just as quickly. So hope this is exciting. If, if this appeals to you, please check it out. Uh, ping us on the community channels. We, we love to talk about uh, new cool features like this and uh, help you make them useful and get ideas on how to make them even better.